Welcome to film number five in our single skin facade series, in which we take a look at how the transitions between different parts of a building shell are constructed. The construction and design transitions between different parts of a building shell are drawn at a scale of 1 to 20. When designing the transition from the base of the building to the underground exterior walls, it's important to ensure that the interior waterproofing of the base slab is connected to the exterior waterproofing of the exterior walls by running it outwards below the rising exterior walls. A further damp proof layer is then provided after the first layer of blocks to prevent water from rising up through the masonry during construction. At the base of the building, that is to say at the point where the underground exterior walls meet with the overground exterior walls, the major problem to be overcome is the double water threat facing the part of the exterior walls that lies above the surface of the ground due to rainwater hitting the ground and splashing back onto the facade. You can see here that this double effect can damage and eventually destroy the fabric of the building. There are two basic solutions to this problem. Firstly, the rendered facades at the base of a building can be treated with a waterproof render or other special coating. The advantage of this solution is that it's barely visible and so allows one external wall finish from ground level to the eaves or upstand. The other option is to build the plinth out of a more durable material such as granite or concrete. The land that runs directly up to the walls should be treated so that as little water as possible sprays onto or stands against the base of the building. The fundamental rule here is to slope the land away from the building. It's also possible to accelerate the removal of water by making the soil as permeable as possible through planting or a gravel strip or by laying a channel drain. In design terms, there are two possibilities. Either the land butts up to the building or vice versa. On the photograph of our Leipzig church on the left here, you can see how the exterior wall literally grows out of the ground. At our Chemnitz police station, shown on the right, there is a joint between the ground and the panel facade because the materials used make it unadvisable for the ground to come into contact with the panels. Timber facades, for example, should finish as much as 30 centimetres above ground level because wood at the base of a building is particularly vulnerable to water spray. At the eaves, that is the point at which the walls meet a pitched roof, it's obvious that the roof should project beyond the wall to make use of the diversion principle. After all, rainwater is not supposed to drip off your umbrella and down inside the collar of your jacket. Creating a roof overhang is a widespread common sense solution. However, architects do not always exhibit common sense. Sometimes they fail to do the obvious thing. As a result, some roofs finish flush with the walls. The aesthetic advantage here lies in the clarity of form this creates, which has the simplicity of a child's naive drawing of a house. In reality, however, such a design can make it quite difficult to arrange the gutters needed to remove the water from the roof. There is even a third option in which the roof finishes short of the walls. In design terms, the idea here is to emphasize the basic cube shape behind which the roof recedes. This is technically feasible if rainwater is collected in the space between the walls and the roof, though the risk of damage in the event of a leaky or blocked gutter is significant. A roof overhang is also the simplest solution at the verge, that is to say the sloping section of a pitched roof at the intersection with the gable end wall. It protects the joint between the wall and the underside of the roof against heavy and driving rain. If wall and roof are flush at the verge or the eaves, there is always a risk of water ingress. Where this is the case, it's also possible to lay verge tiles or special bricks to create a slight overhang. Ending the gable wall above the roof surface can cause construction difficulties and potential defects at the junction of the water-bearing roof covering and the sarking at the gable end. Since the water runs down off the surface of the roof, however, there is no need for waterproofing. Simply overlapping the tiles from the bottom up will suffice. Still, as we all know, the devil is in the details. Because rainwater has to run along the eaves and out of the gutter, the gutter has to be fitted with a fall in the direction of the downpipes. This must be taken into account at the facade planning stage because angled guttering can prove irritating to the human eye. 
The skill lies in knowing how to run the guttering and, where possible, concealing the guttering behind a barge board or moulding. Two outward sloping roof sections meet at what is called a ridge. Following the rainwater diversion principle, this point on a tiled roof requires some sort of covering. This is provided in the form of special ridge tiles that extend over both sides of the roof. They also allow the air circulating within the roof structure to escape. Summary The construction and design transitions between the different parts of a building shell are drawn at a scale of 1 to 20. You will need to find both design and construction solutions for the following transition points. Where the base of the building meets the underground exterior walls, where the underground exterior walls meet the overground exterior walls, and where the overground exterior walls meet a pitched or flat roof. Why not take a look at film number 6 in our Single Skin Facades series? In it, we explain how windows are fitted in exterior walls.